How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? We are back playing some baseball. Uh, our next game, Robbie Ray starting a against the Marlins. We are 33 days from draft day, and we're just going to keep grinding through these games until we get there, playing our critical moments. I'm not sure if we'll get to that draft day in this episode or not. I don't think we will, but you never know. First game, we immediately have a critical moment. And, uh, well, we're trying to stay alive. Top of the ninth, one out, two on. Now, I do think I'm going to be trying to keep these episodes a little bit uh, shorter. Uh, I feel like they've been a bit long, but, man, baseball's got so many games. It's hard to get through a whole season in a reasonable amount of episodes. But we'll see what we can do here. Taking the first pitch, fastball down the middle. Jesse Winker and Adam Frazier on base. I've been saying Winkler the past few episodes and like I pre-recorded a few of them so I was stuck saying it oh sinker hits the zone 0 and 2 very quickly one out we don't want to swing into a double play but we got to get a battle on that one battling away just barely get to the sinker there fourth pitch of the at bat on the way from Dylan Floro and we batted into set double play well, that's our first loss of the day. Not what you want to see. Pretty brutal. That loss puts us 14 and 12. Still alive. Looking okay. And for this game, Logan Gilbert starting. Well, we got to try to survive again. Oh my gosh. Can we just get in a spot maybe where we have the lead? I feel like every single time uh, I'm forced to bat, it doesn't work. Because we've got Jesse Winker at the plate. Yeah. Down one. Bad first pitch to swing on. Down one. He's one for three. One out. Top of the ninth. Got to get a run on the board here. That was a perfect sinker to swing on. And we're just like that. Oh, two again. I'm feeling a little bit worried. We got onto the curveball. It's just going to land foul. Or it's a slider. He doesn't even have a girl. He does have a curveball. Might have been a ball. Staying alive, but we just ground it to the first baseman. Man, good contact on that one. Just a little bit low. Couldn't quite get it. They were in the shift. Probably an out no matter what. So that brings up Mitch Hanniger to the plate. Uh, he's one for three on the day. I don't know if we're going to get a bat on a ball. It's been a struggle for me recently. 143 against lefties. As uh, so we just hit it right back to the pitcher. It's just going to be us just... Uh, poorly batting all episode long no guess we can't help it another win for the Marlins and that puts us one game above 500 we're now into the month of May can we finish out the homestand well well no we get a loss there and it's on to Houston and we'll try to hop in we do have the lead you know when we have the lead I think I can actually do something then honestly it feels like a long time since we've pitched fast runners on base here Definitely have to be worried about this. Two outs. If we can get him popped up, that would be great. We'll go circle change. Second pitch. And ooh, Brantley checks the swing for strike number one. How about a high cutter? If anything, I'm feeling confident about that. That is popped up. Eugenia Suarez tracking towards it. He ran into the ump. Third base ump didn't get out of the way. Does give us a one and two, but man, that kind of hurts. How about a high fastball? He swings on. It's belted deep. But it's not going to be far enough. Kyle Lewis able to get under it. So we get out of the eighth inning alive with the lead intact. We'll have a chance to bat maybe for a couple more runs. Standing into pitch as we are to the top of the order. Billy Hamilton up first 0 for 4 on the day. Probably not. Uh, great odds of us improving that. Swung at the first pitch. A low fastball. Made good contact, but it's the third baseman. Just snagging that one out of the air. Hard to get that one past Bregman. Uh, Adam Frazier up. Somebody's got to be able to get a hit, or at least I've got to be able to bat relatively well for a hit, right? Eventually, we get something on base. I feel like in the last two episodes, maybe we have one total base hit. Uh, beyond that, not too not too good. 1-0 and the count. Second pitch, high and outside fastball. Gives us two balls. And I'm just going to sit here and wait until he throws me a meatball or until he walks us or has two strikes or something. That looked like a meatball. <laughs> I had to swing at it. That's going to be a fly out. Not enough power for Adam Frazier, but he got it over the wall. Well, okay, we got a home run. <laughs> I wish that we could have done that against the Marlins, but yeah, we'll take it. My oh my. 
fourth home run of the year for Adam Frazier, and we increase the lead by one run. I can't be upset with that. Didn't even really seem like a good pitch to swing on. 35 degree launch angle, 88 mile an hour exit velocity. That should have had no chance to do anything. As we get Ty France up to bat, he's got a double and a single. If we can get on base, that would be fine. Uh, Stanek not throwing a whole lot of strikes at the moment. Almost barreled that one up, but to deep center field. I don't know if Ty France has that kind of power. Two outs. Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. We got our home run. If we go three outs uh, pretty quickly here, it's not going to hurt us too much, right? If I managed to give up three runs in the bottom of the ninth, we had other problems coming. First pitch low and away for ball one. It's currently an eight-game hitting streak for Mitch Hanniger. So trying to keep that one alive, trying to get him to nine. But they might just walk us. Who knows? 2-0. and oh. Third pitch on the way now. That one's outside as well. Oh, they can't. You can't call that a strike. That barely caught the zone, if anything. Umps give him a break. It should be 3-0. Instead, it's 2-1. Pitch four going to be on the way. Shouldn't have swung at that. Fastball, I was behind it, and it was low. Puts us in a two-strike count with two outs. Top of this side. We foul it away. Well, I mean, if we could just have a long at-bat that ends in a walk. Wouldn't be too upset with that, or Mitch Hanniger can keep the hitting streak alive with a no-doubt homer to left field. Okay, so it's either a, a, an easy out or a home run for us today. Swung on and belted. <laughs> Mitch Hanniger is third homer of the year, 372. Man, another high uh, launch angle, low exit velocity homer for us. That's a thing of beauty. Man, they bring in another pitcher because of that. Awfully worried. Uh, Stanek doesn't stay in. It's Blake Taylor. And he's going to throw a first pitch fastball to Kyle Lewis. So we've made it through a lot more batters than I expected and doubled the lead just in the top of this inning alone. Feeling good about that. Oh, missed it with Lewis. Thought we were down on that fastball. And he's another guy that I don't know if we're going to be able to really do much with it, especially batting here. I mean, anything to stay alive. I would take a base hit, you know, uh, anything to just uh, kind of boost the confidence of these guys. I feel like maybe we've been in a bit of a, a batting slump, not scoring a crazy amount of runs. One and two. Pitch was definitely a strike, but we just kind of grounded into third. Bregman gets the out. And three outs away here from a win. Flexin is in for the first couple of pitches here. I might break one of uh, the so-called unwritten rules of baseball and make a pitching change mid at bat if we need to. But Jordan Alvarez against Flexin. He was a little bit late on the first pitch fastball for a strike. Don't want to give up the shutout necessarily as we have him in an 0-2. But, uh, you know... As long as we get the win, I'm not too worried about it. Flex in the 12-6 curve. Grounded into a base hit. Hamilton prevents it from becoming anything too big, but that's worrisome. Hung that curve a little bit too high, I think. So that'll bring up Jose Altuve. Zero degree launch angle, 105 miles an hour. That thing, he made serious contact with that. And we're lucky it's not any worse. This one just slicing foul. I'm scared of Altuve. Ah, uh, that's small strike zone. He's a good hitter. It's a strike on anybody else, but a little bit too high there for ball one. It's a reason he's batting fourth in this lineup as we get him swinging and fouling off the four seamer up high. Can we get him with the outside cutter? His first out would be really big. We can pitch around him a little bit, but I don't want to walk him. And we're going to go to the dangerous pitch, the 12 6 curve. Got it into a double play spot. We just missed it. Run to the ball, you idiots. What are they doing? Oh, my gosh. That should have been the easiest double play of all time. Well, we can't have that sort of juju uh, on our pitcher's head. Paul Seawald's coming in. He's got 11 games played. He's got, do they show uh, 10, 10 saves. So uh, we'll, we'll see if he can get another one here. But uh, I just, I'm not confident in allowing uh, Flexen to continue to pitch there. Two runners in scoring position. We want to keep the shutout alive. Three-run homer gets me awfully scared as Bregman's up to bat. 
two runners in scoring position. We need a strikeout on this pitch. He belted that one, but thankfully he's going foul the whole way. And now it's time just to sneak in a strikeout. High fastball. Got him swinging and he misses. Paul Seawald gets it started strong with a strikeout there. If we could strand both of these runners in scoring position, that would be great. Diaz to the plate. First pitch. He just watches the fastball go by, maybe trying to get a read on what's happening. We'll go slider. Try to get it low and away, but he doesn't swing. A little bit too far outside the zone. Catcher wants another high fastball. And we will oblige that one. Just blowed past him. You know, 93 miles an hour, you would think one of these guys could get to, but not the case as we will try to get that inside two-seamer. Not going to swing ball two. Sitting here two and two is the count. Not feeling all that confident. Another strikeout would be wondrous, but this one is gone. The three-run homer, and it's a one-run game in the bottom of the ninth with just one out. Oh, my goodness. Well... So much for the shutout. Diaz, that's just his second homer of the year. That came in an awfully clutch time as they've got Jason Castro up to the bat now. One and one as we're just kind of throwing fastballs around him. Feel like we shouldn't be too worried about him. And now in the two strike count, just going another high fastball. He hasn't hit one yet, but he is fouling him off. Okay, catcher wants another high fastball. <laughs> and it's a swing and a miss. <laughs> High fastballs for the entire at-bat, and it works for out number two. Both outs, strikeouts. Can we make it a third? McCormick shouldn't be a good batter. Just dawdling down the line. Just push it foul. Well, they get a base hit. Tying run on base. Winning run to the plate. Nico Goodrum. I'm awfully worried here. What can we do? Throw in the low two-seamer. One strike, and now one ball. You would think we could just get one guy to pop something up as I just completely lost control of the slider for strike number two. And we're going to go back to it and try to get it the right way. And that's a strikeout looking to end the game. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that should not have been as worrisome as possible. Thank goodness we hit the two homers. Uh, Seawald gets his 11th save of the season. Certainly, it's, it's getting a little bit worrisome there. All the runs pretty much coming in that ninth inning, but we do enough to stay alive. We needed that win. Man, I was starting to panic. We needed that win. That was uh, a pretty big losing streak. Four games in a row uh, as we finally get back on top of one. And let's, uh, instead of playing this Houston game, let's go see what the Rainiers are doing down in AAA. They've started pretty strong, 14 and 10, playing against a 13 and 11 Salt Lake here. So let's just hop in and see what's going on in the minors. We did lose to Houston at the exact same time, but that's the way it works sometimes, I guess. And I think that what we'll do is hop in with the shortstop that we traded for Oswaldo Cabrera and see what the, I think the highest overall guy on our AAA team can do. He is on a bit of a cold streak, batting right around 200 at the point, or at this point in the season. So hopefully we can fix that. As we'll see what we can do. A little shortstop action. That's going to be an easy grounder. No problem worrying about that one. Oh my gosh, I almost missed the throw. But thankfully, we get the put out there. Don't need to worry about uh, getting the double play here, as we'll probably expect to see another grounder come our way. That one just... Throw the quick throw to second. It's a little bit shorter. <laughs> it's the throw I would want to make in real life. Seems a little bit easier to make. Oswaldo doing a good job on defense. What can he do here on offense? 203 on the season. First at bat. We're going to try to improve that a little bit as we take the first pitch for a ball. Traded again from, was it the Yankees? I don't remember. <laughs> one and one as we watch the low pitch come in for a strike. And it's gone. Well, that 203 just improved. And just like that, the shortstop with the no doubt homer. That's three home runs in an episode. Let's see if we can continue that. That one might have gone all the way to Olympia. Always good to see the minor leaguers starting to kick off. Looking for the double play ball here. First pitch in our first throw in time. Second throw in time. Turn both sides. Man, this is only the end of the second. A lot of work here for Cabrera. 
Gotta be honest, I'm kind of doubting that we get another circle change right down the middle, but you never know. Jonathan Diaz, awfully tired. Throws the curveball for a ball. Let's see what, we can, what the Venezuelan can do. Just kind of going to wait for another meatball. Um, I don't think his confidence is super high, and he's almost out of energy, so we should be able to drive something if we make contact. We just have to wait for our pitch. Two ones the count. Stay patient here. And uh, he might walk us. We just want to have a really, really good day. <laughs> if we're going to showcase a minor leaguer, he's got to do pretty well. I just got over the top of that one. Grounded out. Good contact, or, or good timing, but not great contact. Top of the six now. Up 4-1. One. one for two on the day. Lucky to freaking check the swing. I, <laughs> strike on that pitch would have been a travesty. 50 contact and power. So we're going against the righty. And quickly, Oliver Ortega has us in a 2-0 count. Feeling pretty confident about that. Looking for our pitch. And that's the one, but oh, we just didn't quite get it properly. And that should be an easy fly out. Almost back to the warning track. That's the pitch that absolutely could have been gone, though. Good news is it looks like we're still in a good spot to get the wind. Uh, can we get there? This is not going to be an easy throw. 84 speed guy throw is just in time. No, they said he was safe. I don't know. You take a look at that one. 4-1 now. Bottom of the seventh. This game's going by pretty quick. Uh, two outs. We just need to get it to first 59 speed guy. I don't know if this one's in time either. Goodness. Taking our sweet time to make that throw. We get it done though. We should have at least one more at bat here. Would love to get an RBI as uh, Ortega still in two outs, runner on second. Swinging at the first pitch. Man, that fastball came a little bit quicker than I was expecting, but I had to swing at that. 0 .077 this season with runners in scoring position. Not what you want to see. And quickly, we're dotted up 0-2. A couple of fastballs. You would like to get something good here to swing at, but... Just going to have to battle it away, and that one just sent straight to the first baseman. Easy out there. We do end up getting the win. Good to see what's happening down here in the minor leagues. If, if uh, AAA can do really well, we have some prospects that I'm excited about on this team. We need them to get winning experience. We will jump back and forth between uh, our majors and minors. Definitely see a couple of games for the Travelers here and there. Uh, especially, you know, if somebody has a really good month, we'll jump in and player walk with them. Again, unfortunately, a loss there. So we're back to 500 on the season. And we're here in the uh, last game of the series against Houston. Down 0-4. <laughs> I don't know if we're in here to uh, necessarily win the game. Pretty sure the critical situation is because Mitch Haniger is on a 10-game hitting streak. So we're trying to keep that one alive. Wakely 0-1. Good fastball, bottom of the zone. Runner on first, no outs. Take second pitch for a ball. Just 8,600 fans in attendance today. As Jake Orderizzi. I don't know how to say that. Well, <laughs> Mitch Haniger crushing once again. Another shot to the left field. As he has sent that one for a two-run home run. That's going to keep the uh, hitting streak alive, but also it might give us a chance to win this game. I just got to let you guys see this because this one was absolutely just launched out of the ballpark. Like, gone. Over the train track and bouncing out of the stadium. That's a freaking shot. Man. Uh, the unfortunate thing here is that we are player locked as Mitch, so there's uh, maybe a low chance for us to finish this one with a win since we're not batting. Obviously, they weren't able to do anything with the rest of the top of the eighth. And, yep, unfortunately, it is a loss. At least we got a couple of runs, and we keep Mitch Haniger's hitting streak alive, but it's a 4 nothing loss. Couldn't get anything going in the ninth inning. I feel like it's kind of telling that almost every single game is a critical situation as we've got another one here where we are at least are in the lead. So we'll see what we can do with J.P. Crawford's 11-game hitting streak. Crawford, the kind of guy I'm not too confident about being able to do stuff. We are up 4-3 here, bottom of the seventh with one out. Good cutter, just found the inside of the zone. 133 average with risk for Crawford on the season. Um, 
Not the quickest runners on base as we take ball one. Does not look like there's a, a lot of attendance at this game for the Mariners on the weeknight. Chopping away at the slider. That thing's a mile outside. We missed it by a mile. So quickly, one and two. Just trying to stay alive. We foul it off. Battling against the pitcher. We might get a second at bat to try and keep this hitting streak alive. But I'm not feeling all that confident. We'll see. Can we get to the pitch? That was, that was such an obvious ball, but at least we tipped it. I mean, he's going to just keep throwing these further and further outside the zone, you would think. <laughs> the, slight, or the, the sweeping curve gets me. <laughs> was swinging for a fastball up and inside. And instead, we are swinging it away and heading for the bench. Because that one was a little bit disappointing. Unable to hold the lead there. We lose it 4-5. Man, we started this season so strong, but we've just kind of been falling off. Can we do anything against uh, Tampa Bay is the question. We'll get another chance to keep a hitting streak alive as uh, Mitch Haniger has uh, a 12-game streak going. Once again, we are coming in with the lead late in the game. Can we do anything? Uh, 0 for 3 on the day. Oh, I don't think that's going to be enough, but we swung on it. It's back to the warning track and caught almost up against the wall. That was such a good pitch to swing on. I know it's the first pitch. We made good contact. If we pull that to the left field, I think it's gone. Just a little bit too little power on it. A little bit too late on hitting it. And it's going to be another win for Tampa Bay as they come back with a three-run ninth. Eventually, we will turn this around. I feel it. Chris Flexen pitching 15 and 18 on the record. To be fair, Tampa Bay is uh, looking pretty solid. Mitch Haniger, <laughs> can we win it? 0 for 4 for Mitch. Last out, bottom of the ninth. Down a run. Somehow we got to find two runs here. That's been pretty rare. Another first pitch swing from me. Slider low, a little bit late, a little bit low on it. Quickly at one strike count here. Anything to get on base is fine. Second pitch coming. Take it for ball number one. Andrew Kittridge, six pitches in. We'll look to see what he throws on his third pitch, and it's going to be outside for ball number two. Trying to stay ahead in this count. Expecting a strike, though. And no, he deals the sinker inside, 3-1. That's going to be tough for me to swing here. Jared Kelnick on deck with eight home runs on the season. I feel confident about that. Would be a lefty versus righty matchup. I don't know if I swing here, even unless it's really good. Oh, I thought that was outside. Thought that was uh, like a slider, but he keeps it in for strike number two. We'll load the count, 3-2, two, two outs bottom of the ninth and there's no way that's going to get down push into the warning track but going oppo didn't make great contact and it's just another loss they're coming in really quick right now all right well we got one more series to play so we're going to skip this next game against the rays where we get the win and then <laughs> i didn't mean to but we skipped the game against uh the Phillies, where we lose 2-5, so broke a five-game losing streak just to start another one here. Draft is just 22 days away at this point, and with two games to play in this episode, can we start to turn it around? Philadelphia, very similar record. We get the loss there, and we're 16-21, and and we finish this episode 16-22. and Oh, that hurts so bad. Not only that, but Logan Gilbert one of our best pitchers out for two to three months with a dislocated shoulder so we have a couple of pretty brutal injuries he's going to be gone for a while Luis Torrens is still out for another month with his broken hand another catcher in the minors Joseph Odom is out with a fractured shin so when the injuries come to this team they're pretty bad injuries we have been able to scout a few guys, but uh, I haven't really seen anything that really impresses me. We have a couple of guys. Felipe Mosquera, the uh, second baseman, looks like he could be okay. Currently scouting Gustavo Cardona, who could be an okay reliever. Uh, and Robbie Zinn, the blue chip. Yeah, you don't hate to see it. 65 overall with an 80 potential, but we're just trying to look for something. Really hoping that uh, Robert Reese could turn into something big for us. 
Well, that's a disappointing way to end the episode. I accidentally simmed through this game against the Mets that we lose eight to nine. So, man, what, we saw two wins this entire episode? Just uh, went from well above 500 to well below it. Things are falling apart very quickly for us. Uh, man, maybe it's just a tough stretch of this season, but uh, it can't be having this. That's going to put us from like a game and a half or a half game behind first in the division to nine and a half games. Uh, almost in last. Only the A's doing worse than us. One and nine in our last 10 games compared to the Astros, nine and one. A really rough episode, but that's just the way it is sometimes in baseball. It's a game of runs. It's a game of streaks. And we're just going to have to turn it around and find a way to get hot. Hopefully, Logan Gilbert can get healthy a little bit sooner than we expected. But currently, the way that we're sitting, man, you know, we won a lot of games when I couldn't hit anything. Today, we hit three home runs in our few at-bats, and we couldn't win a single game. So I don't know what that says. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Uh, they don't get as much views, but that's just always going to happen on a football channel trying to post baseball. I enjoy them. It's a nice break from having to play uh, a 10 or however many year old game. So if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button. Help them get seen by more people. Make it a little bit more worth my time to make them. And I'll keep pumping them out. Otherwise, if you want to see more of this content, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Then you can head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my uh, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.